So we're ready for our next layer, which is um, our reinforcement layer. And I usually build up a huge amount of plaster. I mean, I fill a bowl, or if you want a bucket, get a cheap dollar bucket and fill it up with a mixture of plaster just to get a bunch. Now, the material I'm using here is sisal fibers, or sisal fibers, I don't know how to pronounce it. But um, uh, it's cheap, and I buy it by the bale. <laughs> a bale will last me quite a while. I use it for all kinds of plaster molds. I take material, those fibers, and I kind of make a little bird's nest out of them, or I make an elongated shape wherever I'm going to place it, and I just I get these fibers kind of working together. It's kind of like the process of fiberglassing something. Um, then I dip them in the plaster, and then I lay them onto that splash coat, which by now is hard. It should be fairly hard uh, because we're now pressing our hands onto that first coat. It's got to be hard or we'll press into the detail underneath. So it's got to be hard. We're pressing these little, I don't know what you'd call them, little swatches of plaster and sisal fibers into the areas. The first place I go is I go right around that wall. I go and cover the main areas of reinforcing and I keep going back. Uh, stick the fibers, the little swatches of fibers in the plaster, squeeze out a little bit, work it onto it. Another thing that's going to happen is that first layer is going to suck all the water out of the plaster you've got now. So stick it on there quickly. Go quickly. Press, press, press. Work all the bubbles out. By the way, these techniques work for UltraCal 30 too. It reinforces all kinds of plasters. Uh, but for HydroCal, you got to go quick. So we build it up, building it up, and then we're building it up. I used to do just one layer because this, is, this mold is not going to go in the oven. Uh, all we're doing is making it firm enough so we can hold it, thick enough so we can you know, rotate it, pour latex in, latex out. That's it. Um, don't want it super, super thick. Um, build up those layers, and if we've got little fibers, loose fibers sticking out, we take what's left in the bowl and we kind of spatula it on, uh, smoothing the surface, build up, so forth and so forth. Little ugly areas, I get a little scraper while it's still fairly soft. Plaster will take a while to get harder and harder. Scrape it off, scrape it off, scrape it off. And of course, the final, um, the final step um, is scraping with um, plaster knives or plaster scrapers. I guess is the word. Um, files, rasps. You get your nice big old foot and a half, foot and a half long rasp, and just cut those ugly little, because you're going to be handling this and it's going to be very heavy when you start pouring latex. So you're going to have, you don't want nice smooth edges and corners or they're going to cut your hand, I promise you. This plaster is very hard. So we we work on this and I don't let this sit for very long. Uh, but I let it get from, it'll get warm, I let it get warm and then after it's through being warm it'll start cooling off. That's when I take the clay wall off and start prepping for the front half. Once that clay wall is down, I can um, take a rasp, chisel, a knife, um, and uh, level off the whole, um, the whole back half there. You can see how, our, how deep our thickness is. Our clay wall gave us an idea of, of how thick the overall mold uh, ought to be, uh, especially these edges need to be pretty pretty thick because we sometimes will pry, we'll pry the mold apart. It's got to be very well reinforced at those at those points. That's why we use the sisal fibers around there specifically also. Uh, now the next thing I do is I lay this, the, uh, I do the back first specifically so I can do this technique where I lay the sculpture on its back so we can t take uh, special care uh, to get detail on the front. Um, so we can have more control over where the, the plaster lands so that we don't lose it on the floor or on our work table or whatever. We can we brush it and it goes into the details. And also at this point we can take a look at the sculpture and see angles that we didn't see before and fix um, areas that we couldn't get to because of the light, because of the angle we were sitting or whatever. Um, so I'll fix things here. 
uh, even through the spray you can still sculpt some detail this, this, the, the plastic coating spray you can sculpt detail you can put in texture and so forth um, matter of fact sometimes it looks better when you put in certain details uh, through the plastic uh, it softens it a little bit and you can respray it if you want take it, this chance to, to fix any kind of dings or anything that we've, we've done while messing with the back half um, the next thing I do is I put on what I call, I call them wedgies. Some people call them pry points, but they are little wedge shapes that are big enough, um, once we have the front half on, they're big enough so we can work a screwdriver or a chisel in between there and pry the front from the back. This gives us a place to actually work that in. You can make it out of clay. Um, whatever, I mean, uh, very much like the keys, I'm sure you can make them out of silicone and just stick them on. Uh, clay usually grabs hold a little better. Uh, once I have those down, I get my mold release, and this is, the, this is important, pay close attention. I get my mold release, and I cover the entire surface of where the wall was at. I, the entire surface of all the plaster that's there. I even put it on the plaster eyes that we're using here, just in case. Why? This is important. Wet plaster will bond with dry plaster. You got wet plaster there, you put it on dry plaster, it's bonded. Um, what we're doing is we're using um, a, a Vaseline, which is an oil base, as a barrier. Again, back to our physics, our chemistry. Water-based material, oil-based material, water-based material. Um, there's a barrier between the two water-based materials. Um, so I brush this on. Now, some people just take it right out of a jar and smear it on. That, to me, is a little uh, too iffy. Um, you can take it and put it in a little glass jar and heat it melt it down to a liquid like a watery state and brush it on with a brush. That's good. That means you have a finer film. What you want is a waxy separation. You don't want a big thick gob of it on. Uh, what I do is I go to the hardware store, I pick up a can of material called Carbosol, C-A-R-B-O-S-O-L from Sunnyside, Carbosol, and I mix oh, 40, 60, 30, 70 of Carbosol, 30 to 70 percent Vaseline in a jar, glass jar. Shake it up really well. It'll break the Vaseline down to a watery consistency. And then you brush that on the surface of your plaster. It is a barrier so we can get the two halves apart. If you don't, if you forget that step, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> You're screwed. Um, people, uh, people have talked about using other things. You can use uh, Johnson's floor wax if you want. Brush it on there, then work it off. You know, buff it real fine, whatever. Get a fine coat that's not water-based between the two. Turtle wax won't work, I don't think, because it's got lanolin in it to water-based. Get something that is wax or petroleum something. Spray plastic, spray acrylic won't hold. It won't work. It bonds anyway. It's got something to do with heat, something. Um, so work that on. And I make sure it's on every every detail, especially right up to where it touches the sculpture, everywhere. And I go off on the edge, past the edge, near the top and the sides, just in case some runs over to the side or whatever. I want to be able to find my edge when I want to separate those two. Then we do the same procedure for the back we did for the front. We been, begin with a, a splash coat. Mix up a little uh, creamy consistency splash coat, brush it in all the details. Again, if you want to, you know, use uh, canned air, compressed air, blow off areas, get bubbles out in, in pockets or in little creases where it might gather. Do that at the, while doing the splash coat. Build up and you build up and you build up. Just like we did the back, we build it up, 
add thicker amounts as our splash coat start plaster starts thickening up. We uh, build up thicker and thicker amounts, and then uh, we just kind of work whatever's left on there. Let that get get that hard and, and tough, which will be pretty quickly. And we do the same thing. We get our little nests of fibers. Again, let's talk about this reinforcement. If you don't, if you can't find the sisal fibers, that's fine. You can go to a cloth world and you can get burlap. It's very cheap a yard. I use burlap for years. Uh, there's loose weave, there's tight weave. It doesn't make a difference. I've used denim <laughs> in a pinch. Had a deadline. Was in the middle of the night. Couldn't go to find to buy burlap. I used old tore up pair of jeans. Just something in there to in case the plaster cracks, whatever, it's held together long enough for you to piece it back together again and fix it somehow on the outside. Uh, reinforces it. I think once it dries, it pulls it tighter. Sisal fibers, burlap, terry cloth, old towels, stick it in the plaster, wring it out, get a little bit more wet, reinforce it on there. And then you work your loose uh, plaster on the outside, work it out, smooth it over, build up until you have a compatible thickness on the front like you had on the back. Smooth it out, remember, rake, rake the, the rough edges off so we don't cut ourselves when we're handling it, smooth it out. Um, a good technique if it, if it doesn't sit so quickly to get smooth out is grab a handful of um, fibers, grab a handful of like a terry cloth and just kind of rub all over and rub those details down. You can do that at a certain point where it just smooths it all out. Uh, you especially have a lot of time with UltraCal 30. It's easy to do this with UltraCal 30. It just really smooths everything out. Um, then once it's done and it's encased, patience. I always pull my gloves off or if I forget to wear my gloves I go wash my hands real quickly because that stuff will get in your hair uh, and I don't worry about it. I go off and come back the next day. I try to give it at least 10-12 hours because the plaster will continue to um, tighten up, firm up, do its chemical reaction, the heating and the cooling and it will continue uh, firming, getting harder very, very gradually. So I'll come back the next day and we take a look and see what we got. The next day we come in with sweaty palms and a screwdriver, maybe a hammer and a chisel, and we start working our pry points. We stick our screwdriver in there and we jiggle it, work that clay out, start tapping that hammer, getting that uh, screwdriver blade wedged in between don't, we don't want to hammer it too much. We want to go all the way around uh, and, and work our pry points equally if we can. Uh, if you tap it a couple of times and you see the separation boom, all the way around, congratulations. You did the right separation and it's going to come apart. Um, if you tap, tap, tap and nothing happens, nah, something's caught up somewhere. But don't, do not freak. Okay. Um, you may need to, uh, instead of using just a screwdriver, you may need a little hammer and a chisel. You got to think about good firm pressure, equal pressure, all the way around. Uh, I've seen people, and I've done this before, use wooden shims. You can buy them at uh, hardware stores. Tap, 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 working them in there, prying those halves apart all the way around. Uh, we're pretty lucky here. This came apart pretty easily. And um, we worked all the pry points and the front half comes off. And we left the back half. The back half is hanging up. I do not freak out. Um, I know very well that it could be at the, at the shoulder that there is a slight undercut holding it on. But Knowing what I know about clay and the way it loves to hang on to plaster, I don't think it's that. 